What's going on my dudes? If you don't know me, my name is Luke Shaw. I'm a director, cinematographer, and colorist based out of Texas. And I do work all over the place with different brands and artists. I shoot commercials, music videos, even a few weddings. And I'm starting this channel to really fill a little bit of a gap. I'm not gonna make a tutorial on how to stabilize your footage in Premiere Pro. I'm also not going to do, you know, super scientific dynamic range tests of every new camera that comes out. But ultimately, I'm gonna make fun content that I would really like to watch that I feel like hasn't really been done yet. I thought a great first video for my channel would be a what's in my camera bag that way you guys can kind of get to know me but also I get a lot of questions about what gear I use. Have you guys ever heard the phrase story is king? Three words story is king. <laughs> God I almost threw up in my mouth. Don't get me wrong Story is super important. In fact, it probably is the most important thing. But I'm just sick of hearing that because gear does matter. If story is the king, then gear is the queen. They're not shooting movies on iPhones unless they're trying to prove a point that you can shoot a movie with iPhones. The point is that there is a reason Filmmakers spend a lot of money on their cameras. It's not just because it looks dope. What I feel like a lot of people are trying to say when they say that story is king, don't worry about the gear, is they're saying don't let the gear limit you. Because the reality is, if a lot of amateur filmmakers were given an Ari Alexa, the image would not look any better at all. The Ari Alexa gives you a file that you can manipulate in order to create a great image. Um, and don't get me wrong, it has a great image, straight out of camera. But the point is, is that gear doesn't necessarily make you a filmmaker. But gear can absolutely limit you. <laughs> so first off, we're going to start with the question that I get the most, and that is what camera do I use? I'm gonna show you my daily driver. Check it out. Oh man. So this is the Hiro. Here we go. Black Magic Design Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K G2. And I don't know why they couldn't have named it something simpler, but this thing is pretty impressive. It has a Super 35 sensor and does 4.6K in anywhere from 24 frames per second all the way up to 120 frames per second, all without cropping the sensor and the quality is still great. And then if you do want to go down to 1080, then it shoots up to 300 frames per second. But the most impressive part is that it does all that in 12-bit Blackmagic Raw, which is the real reason that I bought this. This body is pretty cheap, um, but in order to really get it to its full potential, you are gonna have to buy some accessories, um, as you can see. Now we're gonna get to my B cam, and that is actually what you're watching it on right now. Um, in the beginning, I was shooting on the Ursa G2, but since I had to show you that, I had to switch to the Pocket 6K. So I don't know if you noticed that difference. You probably did because I had like a, a five hour break between that, but um, I'm gonna change it back right now. Did you notice that? Probably because I had to move some stuff around, <laughs> but now we're back on the Ursa. You know what's What's great is I can uh, I can just use this and and check my focus down on my monitor down there.
this is a great B cam, uh, but it's also a super capable camera, especially if you've been into filmmaking for a little bit and you're looking at stepping up your game. Um, this is a great next step. Um, and the reason is because it does 12 bit uh, internally. There are other cameras out there that maybe have a better form factor and a similar price range um, that offer similar specs. I haven't actually used them, um, but I can vouch for the Pocket 6K. I've had a great experience with it. It's been super reliable. I've just had a lot of great experiences with Blackmagic cameras. The final camera we have on the list is this. This is the EOS R and honestly, I don't use I don't use this camera for video, I gotta be honest. I bought this for photos and I wouldn't recommend this to someone um, for photos or videos in this price point. Um, there are better cameras out there that do both of those jobs better than this at that price point. The reason I bought it is because at the time this was the only mirrorless Canon camera out there. I made all of my lenses Canon, that way they can pretty much go on any cinema camera. And as far as photos go, autofocus performance is pretty important. I kind of just felt like if I have all these Canon lenses, I should really be taking advantage of them on a native camera. And so that's why I picked up the EOS R. It's also super cheap. So maybe if you're in the similar position as me, you, that also works for you. These aren't all of my lenses, these are most of them, um, but obviously I have a lens here and there. And unfortunately those are my two most used lenses, otherwise I wouldn't be using them right now. Really what we're left with are my three most used lenses, two of them you cannot see. Um, and I'd say ultimately if I had to pick two lenses, I would pick this one. This is the Sigma 70-200 2.8 and this one. That is the Sigma 24mm 1.4. These two lenses allow me to get from the focal length of as wide as 24 all the way to 70 and all at relatively high apertures. The reason I use the 24 in conjunction with the 24 to 70 is because on the wide end, 24 millimeter at 1.4, that shallower depth of field makes a really big difference because the wider the lens um, gets, the more everything is in focus. And so at 2.8, this does a really good job up until about 35 millimeters. Um, but until then, if you really want a stylized look, I mean, I'm not saying you should shoot everything wide open, but if you want that option, I think the 24 really goes well with the 24 to 70. And as for this lens, this is the Sigma 14 to 24 2.8. I definitely don't discount that lens. Honestly, it's my next most used lens. I love going wider than 24 for certain applications like travel stuff, even some commercial stuff, or this right now. Right now I'm all the way out at 14 millimeters and it really gives a big wide field of view that I love. So what do we talk about next? Um, I don't know. I totally forgot about this category for some reason. The drone that I use is the Mavic 2 Pro. Um, this is by far in my opinion, the best drone on the market in its category. There's two reasons, and they both have to do with this, the camera right here. The sensor is a one inch sensor, it's the biggest sensor that comes on these small type drones. Oh, does size matter? Yes, uh, as big as they come. And it also shoots in 10-bit, and that's probably the biggest thing. 10-bit is such a big deal. 
Um, and if you still don't know what I'm talking about, all these bits, maybe I'll make a video about it. So since this is a what's in my camera bag, I guess I actually do need to show you what actually goes in my camera bag when I'm limited to a camera bag. So I'm going to show you what I would take with me if I had no idea what I was going to encounter that day. I had to be prepared for everything. <laughs> wow, this is heavy. Now, I'm not one of those people that use expensive camera bags. This was like $60. It's Atarian. Atarian something. Alrighty, so V mount battery. Polo Pro Matte Box. I have the Ursa Mini itself. And we have the Sigma 24 to 70. And the Sigma 24 1.4. Mavic 2 Pro, Mavic 2 Pro controller, an EOS R with a 35 1.4 for those tasty Instagram photos. We have the Sigma 70 to 200 2.8. Lastly, we have the 2019 MacBook Pro. So that was it for what's in my camera bag. Um, I do have other gear, obviously that. You know, I don't always take with me like my microphones, my lights, my haze machines. I, I have so much other stuff that I didn't put in here. Let me know if you guys want to know about any of that stuff. Um, I definitely want to start putting more videos out. Anyways, Potato Jet is one of my favorite YouTubers and he always ends his videos by reading some comments. So that's what we're going to do and see how that goes. Oh wait, this is, this is like my first YouTube video. Okay. Anyways, I do want to do a little bit of like reading the comments, asking maybe questions at the end of every video. So, um, it'd be sick if you dropped a comment and uh, asked me a question, told me what your favorite color is. Just get me to a hundred subscribers. That's all I want. A hundred subscribers, hundred of you subscribe. All right. Well, that is all for now.